do that. Sweet. So today I'm going to go through all the settings on the DJI Fly app, um, specifically in relation to the Mavic Air 2. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so I also thought it was an ideal opportunity to show you my herb collection. So there it is. Uh, quite proud of my herb collection. So let me know what you think in the comments below. But um, yeah, without further ado, let's go through all these uh, settings and see what they all do. So if you go onto the top left, that just takes you back to the to your drone. Hit the go fly button, takes you back onto the screen. Okay. On the controller itself, you can switch between each mode using the switch in the middle of the controller. Uh, and you can also see on the screen which mode you're in all times in the top left hand corner. So we'll just leave it in normal for the time being. In the top in the middle of the screen, you've got your pre-flight check, which will give you the information on your return to home altitude, your maximum altitude, your maximum distance, um, your SD cards, and your internal memory. Uh, this, this is where we'll be able to format both of those. Let's just format the SD card while we're here. Just, just click format, SD card, format. You can do the same with the internal internal storage format so that's all the uh, internal memory and the SD card has all been formatted now so I've, I'm good to go in terms of that so that's your pre-flight check so you can access that from the middle middle of the screen at the top if you move across the left to right the next item you'll come across is the obstacle avoidance icon um, obviously you want to leave that on most of the time if you're in sport mode um, but what you'll see is if you switch to sport mode that then goes red. If you look at that icon and it's in red, it means your obstacle avoidance isn't on, so you might want to switch that on. But uh, like I say, in sports mode, that'll be off anyway, because you can't use it in sports mode. Okay, and then if you go across from that, you'll get to the satellite icon, and that will just tell you the amount of satellites that are picking up your signal. Go across from that, and you will get to the GPS bars, and that will tell you how strong the GPS signal is. Uh, at the moment we've got five bars here, so you know, really strong signal, great to fly. Uh, you've also got your Wi-Fi signal next to that. Obviously, that will tell you how strong the signal is between your controller and the drone itself. Um, so keep an eye on that. And next to that, you have your battery status, so it'll tell you what battery life you've got on there. And if you tap on the battery icon, it will give you more in-depth information as to each of the different cells in the battery uh, and the battery temperature, uh, how much flight time you've got left. So that's quite handy. But you uh, will actually have the flight time that you have remaining up in the top right hand corner as well. So if we come down to the middle left, you have got your takeoff icon. And if you click on that, it will then give you the option to take off. Now I'm not gonna do that at the moment because my drone is placed in my kitchen um, looking at my herb collection. So it's probably not a good idea to take off at the moment. All right, so we come out of that. So if we switch across to the right hand side in the middle, we've got all the camera options. So if we click on the one above the big red button, it will bring up all of our camera options. So all the photo and video options available on the drone. Uh, you've got photo, video, quick shot and hyperlapse and the pano as well. So that's all in the right hand column. If you move across to the next column, you've got normal mode, HDR mode and slow motion. Um, some of these modes will only work with certain resolutions and frame rates. So it all depends on what you choose in that respect. So if you move across to the next column, you've got 4K, 2.7K, 1080p. Remember, this is all in video mode. And you've got all your frame rates next to that. So you can see if you hit the slow motion, it will then give you different options for frame rates. I'm not gonna go into detail into the video qualities and resolutions in this video. I will be going into them at some stage when I've tested out the drone a bit more. 
um, but for now it's good to know just where you can access everything. So if we go into photo mode, you can see you can do the single shot, 48 megapixel, the smart shot gives you the image that the drone decides is the best image for that picture. It's pretty good, I've used it and it, it looks pretty good. AEB, AEB stands for Auto Exposure Bracketing. It will take multiple shots of the same image um, in different exposure values, so you can then decide afterwards which picture you prefer. It can be useful in tricky situations where you're not sure which part of the image to expose to, and then you can decide afterwards which image is best. Um, but obviously it takes up a bit more memory on your SD card if you're taking multiple pictures for each image. Let's just take a quick photo, hang on a sec. Go to the right hand side of the screen where the big round button is, and below that there's the play button, hit the play button, and you'll see there's a photo of my herb garden. As soon as you take a photo or a video, you'll be able to access it by the play button on your phone. Um, you can even do a little bit of an edit on it, apply some sort of filter. So if you're out somewhere taking a good photo, want to do a quick edit and get it onto your Instagram or whatever, it's quite a good function. But yeah, you can see all your pictures and videos here. Okay, moving on to the bottom left hand side of the screen, you'll see the little map icon. If you click on the map icon, it will bring up a map of where your drone is and the surrounding areas. If you click on the map, it will make the map bigger. So if you want to see where you are, and you can even zoom out, a bit like on Google Maps, you just pinch it, you can zoom in and out. There's a few other options on the right hand side. Quite handy to see where you are, what's going on, but it can be a little bit distracting, so I just have it down in the bottom corner. So if you want to get rid of the map, and just have the small icon, just click in the bottom left hand corner, and there. That's how to use the map function. If we move across, you've then got your height and your distance. So you can see I'm sitting in my office, my drone's in the kitchen, you can see it's 22 feet away from me at the moment. Above that you'll be able to see the speed of the drone going up or going out. But obviously there's the drone stationary at the moment, so that's at zero. If you go into the middle, it's quite a handy feature, it shows you where the drone is in comparison to you. So it's quite handy if you lose your drone because you can move this around and you should be able to find a drone. Obviously you should be keeping it in visual line of sight in the UK. Not sure if it's the same in the US, I don't think it is. So yeah, if you lose your drone, don't know where it is, at least you can get a rough idea which direction it is by moving your controller around until it lines up. So that's quite handy. And then the bottom right hand corner, you have all the exposure settings. If you want a little bit more control over the exposure, then all your exposure settings, your shutter speeds, your ISO, you can access it all in the bottom right hand section of the screen. Okay, so that's that's all the, the main functions on the front screen, um, but there are some hidden functions. If you go to the top right hand corner, where the three dots are, click on the three dots, and we have all of these different controls. So you put your safety, control, camera, transmission, and the about, it's just, about the drone. We won't really be covering that one, we'll just have a quick look. Just tells you what firmware update you're on, model number and all of that sort of thing. So it's useful to have, but we won't be covering that in this tutorial. Okay, so the first tab, safety. This is where you can adjust your max altitude, your max distance, um, your auto return home altitude. So all these things you can adjust so the drone knows what to do in those circumstances. Now your max altitude, your height basically, in the UK is 400 feet. So if we adjust that to 400 feet, 400 feet, I think I get away with 400.2. Uh, max distance in the UK is 500 meters, so that's 1,640 feet roughly. That's good enough. That is the law in the UK. I know not everyone likes it or uh, wants to abide by it, but that is what it is. Obviously it's up to you whether you change it on your controller or not. Um, but this way you know you know where you're at. If you get to the, uh, the limit, you know you're at your limit. So you know you shouldn't be going any further. Now you return to home, make sure you've given it enough so that if you need to clear buildings, trees, that sort of thing, 
give it a bit of altitude to play with. I've got mine set at 98 feet at the moment. So yeah, just make sure you've given yourself enough room so that if it has to fly up into the air and come back to you, it clears all the objects in the way. Obviously you don't want it crashing into trees on the way back. And you've got your update home point. So you can switch. Okay, I can't actually do it at the moment because it's not flying. If it was flying, I could change the update home point to the controller instead of where it's taken off from so that it's when it comes back to you if you've moved since it took off when it comes back to you it'll come back to you where you are rather than where you were which is quite handy if you're out and about and you've you're on your bike or whatever and it's following you you don't want it to then return back to where you've just come from so that's quite handy but you can only do that when it's in the air you can't do it at the moment okay then if you page down we get to obstacle detection Obviously you want that on. Sport mode will automatically turn this off. The rest of the time I suggest you keep it on. I can't really see a good reason for not having obstacle detection on. And then you've got APAS underneath that, the Advanced Pilot Assistance Systems. It's quite a mouthful that. Um, I have mine on most of the time. Some people keep it off because apparently it slows the drone down, but I haven't seen a great deal of difference in that. It might be true, so you might need to turn that off if you're chasing something that's quite fast. But obviously, yeah, having that on gives you that extra obstacle avoidance. Um, if we page down, and this is where you can collaborate the compass and the IMU not going to do that at the moment don't need to but that's where you would do it if you needed to do that um, the auxiliary LED the little light underneath the drone when it takes off and lands you can either have it on auto which I keep it on on all the time or off so you can change that here I keep it on auto um, so when it takes off and lands the little light comes on quite handy in, in low light and then we get to unlock GEO zones. If you unlock different GEO zones, then your licenses will appear in here so that you can get into restricted areas as and when you need that, basically. Find my drone, that's a nice little function. If you do lose your drone, this will tell you where it is. And then when you get close to your drone, hit the start flashing and beeping button and it will start flashing and beeping. If, if it's stuck in a tree somewhere, hit the start flashing and beeping you should be able to locate it, so that's great. A nice little function, that. Underneath Find My Drone, we've got the advanced safety settings. So if we go into this, here you can change what happens if your signal's lost. So you can either get the drone to return to home, which is what it's usually set on. That's what I keep it set on most of the time. You can get the drone to just descend. So if you lose signal, the drone will just descend and land and then you can use your find your drone to find it find it or you can select hover and the drone will just hover where it is until you get the connection back so it's up to you which one you use i like to use return to home so that if the signal's lost it just flies back to to me and here you can also change your emergency propeller stop settings so that if something's hurtling towards you and you just have to get out of the sky straight away bang hit your joysticks in the formations set up and it will just cut the propellers, try and fall out of the sky. You get, you're gonna wanna hope that you never have to use that function anyway, but if, if you do, it's good to have it set up and to know how it works. So that's where you do that. Uh, remote identification underneath that, I, I wouldn't worry too much about that at the moment. That's all to do with identifying your drone. I think it switches itself on automatically when you turn the drone on. You can switch it off and then your drone's sort of not identifiable. You know, as long as you're flying safe, you shouldn't have to worry about that anyway. If we move across to the control tab, and this is where you can change your units. So you can have it in metric or imperial. I've got mine set in imperial at the moment. I'm old school, feet and inches and but you can change it to metric if you want to. You can change your gimbal mode. You can put it in FPV mode so that it just, wherever the drone goes, the gimbal goes. It's, it's basically like a point of view from the drone. So you can change it to that if you want to. Um, I'd leave mine on follow mode. You can also allow upward gimbal rotation. If you have that off, as soon as the gimbal gets level, it will stop, it won't go any further. If you switch it on, which I have it on, then the gimbal can point upwards as well. I think it's about 40 degrees. You can also calibrate your gimbal 
sometimes if your gimbal's a bit off, it's a bit wonky. If you go in here and uh, reset a gimbal, calibrate your gimbal, and that should sort out any of those issues. The phone charging, so if you switch it on, your phone will start charging. Now, it used to be the case that you just used to plug it in and it was automatically charging your phone. Now they've got rid of that now. I don't know if that's to conserve battery in the controller itself. But yeah, you have to actually switch that on. I think you have to do it each time. So if you switch it on now and turn it off, and when you go back in, it will automatically be off. So you have to switch it back on. If you want to charge your phone while you're flying, then you do need to switch this function on, and that's in the control functions. Okay, you can also change your stick mode however you like to fly. Most people fly in mode two, which is on at the moment, but it's up to you. You can change it to, you can even customize it so you can fly it how you want, basically. And so that's the stick mode. So we've also got this button on the left hand side of the control that we can customize, button customization, tap or double tap. And if you go into each, you can decide what you want the button to do if you tap it. You can either have it on reset a gimbal, turn the auxiliary LED on and off, or toggle the map and live view. I've got it set to auxiliary LED so I can turn the landing light on and off if I want to. Double tap, you've got the same options. I've got mine on recenter gimbal. So if my gimbal's pointing upwards and I want to recenter it, I just double tap that button and it uh, center it again. So that's quite handy to have. Remote control calibration. You can only do that when the drone's powered off, but if you did need to do that, then that's where you would do it, the RC calibration. And if you're new to flying drones, there's a little flight tutorial that you can watch if you press the flight tutorial option. So if we go back to the main menu again and the camera tab. So this is where you can change all the camera options. So you can either shoot in JPEG, JPEG and RAW. If you're a photographer and you want to get the best images, then you'll probably be wanting to shoot in JPEG and RAW. So you get the RAW file as well as the JPEG. The size, the aspect ratio, 4.3 or 16.9. Again, for photography, you probably want to keep that at 4.3. You can always crop to 16.9 in post if you want to. Histogram, you can turn that on so you can see where you are overexposing, underexposing. You can have that on your live screen so that when you're taking photos or video, you know if you're under or overexposing anything. I like to have the histogram on. It's always good to know if you're over or underexposing something. Often your eyes don't really tell you the truth. If you turn the overexposure warning on, then if you are overexposing something, you will get these zebra lines. They can be a bit of distracting sometimes, so I tend to leave them off. Auto sync HD photos, this is a nice little function. So when you take a photo, it will automatically save the JPEG into a file on your phone. So you can instantly share your photos. Uh, it won't save the raw files to your phone, just the JPEG. So it's up to you if you have that on and off. Obviously, if you have it on, it's gonna use that memory on your phone, but it's a nice little function to have. Grid lines, you can turn on grid lines so that you can see what you're doing. And there's loads of different options for these grid lines. You can have the diagonals. You can have the crisscross or the square in the middle of the screen. You can have them all on. Um, looks a bit mad, but you can have that to take a photo and get your composition right you can use all those functions um, but the screen becomes a bit busy I think uh, white balance you can auto white balance the auto white balance on these drones is pretty good I think um, but you can do it manually if you want to you can change the Kelvin if you want it a bit warmer a bit colder sorry you go towards the lower kelvins if you want it a bit warmer towards higher kelvins it's up to you i like to keep mine on an auto i think that works really well so far anyway and um, i'll let you know if that's not the case but so far it looks like that works pretty well underneath that you've got your storage information so you've got your sd card how much is available on your sd card and your internal storage as well and you can format them from here cache when recording i always have that off i think it uses up way too much space on your phone to warrant having it on but you can turn that on and it will save to your phone as well as on your sd cards i always have it switched off i'm quite happy with it staying on the sd card and getting off the sd card when i get home okay so if we come out of camera and go to transmission 
definition is the resolution that it's going to send to your phone or tablet that you're using to control the drone. If you have it on smooth, it'll be a lower resolution image, but you can probably go further with the drone. If you have it on HD, better image, might not be able to go as far before it starts sort of losing signal. To be honest, I haven't lost, I've had it on HD the whole time and it hasn't been a problem. So you might not need to change it. To, but if you do, if you find that you're having problems, switch it to smooth and that might sort out those problems for you. Frequency, this is the frequency the drone's flying at. Leave it on dual band, I would anyway. But you can change the frequency signal that the drone is using by using these options on your controller. And I would also leave the channel mode on auto. So that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I know it's been a bit of a long one, but obviously it's best to go over all the functions on this app. The Go Fly app with the Mavic Air 2. If you've enjoyed the video, I found it helpful. If you could like, subscribe, hit the bell. It all helps me and trying to grow this channel and make a bit of a community. So I'd love to have you on board. So if you could do that for me, that would be fab. I'm going to be doing another video soon where I take the Mavic Air 2 out and do a few tests with it on the functions, the quick shot function, the follow functions, all of that. So I'll be covering that in another video. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell and I'll notify you when that video comes out. But for now, I'll see you later.